Zanele, good afternoon. Thanks so much for your time. What was your experience at the Devon Girls College? Hi, Clement. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, um, my experience at Devon Girls College was similar to very many girls of color and of diverse backgrounds who have been speaking up lately. And it was just one of, you know, overt and covert racism. Mm. So the overt racism was students saying and doing racist and discriminatory things to other students with there being no repercussions or any follow-up on that. S teachers saying and doing racist things, um, you know, and discriminatory things, targeting girls for their hair, targeting girls for their religious practices and wearing religious symbols like Ispa and La or a red string and forcing girls to cut them off with no recourse or anywhere for girls to turn to for things like that. Policies that are discriminatory against hair, you know, the uniform. So, yeah, those are were, those were some of the issues that we face and that we're talking about now. How do we change such institutions, um, Zanele? Because you, you, you speak about overt and covert uh, racism because uh, some of this racism is quite embedded. So it, it's not just on the surface of the students that are there and the things that are saying against black people, but some of it is quite institutionalized. That's exactly what we're saying and what we're trying to get the school to realize. I mean, Durban Girls College is almost 150 years old. The traditions, the values, the ideas that they have around the type of girl that they um, that attend that school are just completely outdated. And what we're saying that needs to change is that there needs to be transparency from the school about what exactly they are doing to embrace transformation and to cater to the diverse girls who attend. There needs to be accountability, um, you know, for these plans that they make to reform the school, accountability for staff and students who are discriminatory and racist, and there needs to be overall a plan that the school shares with us, communicates with the current girls, the parents, and the old girls, which we can also contribute to, help with, and guide, because they can't do it on their own. Like you said, racism and discrimination is embedded in the structures of these institutions, and without a collaborative, democratic, and representative process where they really engage students, parents, and former students, we don't don't think they can just fix it on their own. Mm. So how do you want to go about helping ensure there is accountability and change? I see there is, there's what now, 5,000 people that have signed this online petition. What other mechanisms are you looking at uh, just to ensure that that change happens and happens very soon? Um, so within the, within the school, the girls have called for um, repercussions for um, specific racist and, racist and discriminatory incidents involving teachers and students. They've also called for real concrete action. There was a, um, a, a girls' diversity and inclusion committee that was set up in the school, but without the support and the backing and the ongoing support of the teachers and the headmistress, the girls have found that it was ineffective. So they really want to see the those kinds of changes, you know, the, the specific um, addressing within the school policy, you know, within the code of conduct, specific use of anti-racism um, language, specific use of anti-discrimination language, and a specific section of the school policy that deals directly with um, enabling inclusion and, and building diversity in the school. Speak to me, Zanele, about the impact that such overt and covert racism has on the pupils when they leave their school because there is an impact, right? There really, really is. I mean, I'll just speak for myself personally. You know, you, you go through the school, and I was at DGT from grade one until matric, and you're told the entire time how you're, oh, you're so lucky to be there. You're yeah. a leader. You're a future leader. You're, you belong to, um, you know, a, a, a really well-rounded set of the South African population. But the truth is that every day your confidence is getting worn down. You doubt yourself. You don't really get to explore your own culture, your own race, your own to learn about yourself and to really come into yourself, um, connected to your culture, your race, your understanding of who you are as a South African. And I think as old girls, we've been talking a lot about the unlearning that we had to do when we left these schools because of how much we felt that we had been you know, whitewashed into all fitting into one idea of the right kind of girl at that school. All right, Zanele, let me thank you so much for speaking to us this afternoon. And I really 
am sorry for your experience uh, at the school. But uh, then again, such is a story of many black people in this country.